Good morning everyone and a happy Christmas on this Thursday the 29th of December, the feast of Thomas a Becket of Canterbury, Archbishop and Martyr. After a good education, he served as clerk to a burgess before entering the service of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Theobald. He was appointed Chancellor by King Henry II. Having worked harmoniously with the King, he was nominated as Archbishop of Canterbury. After friction and conflict, Thomas fled to France. Encouraged by the Pope, he pursued his argument from exile by sending back letters. He returned to Canterbury. His conflict with King Henry stemmed from their equal personal ambitions, played out in the inevitable tension between church and state. He was murdered by the king's knights in Canterbury Cathedral during the office of Edensong in 1170 and proclaimed a saint three years later. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 19 The heavens are telling the glory of God, the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring for ever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward, but who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults, keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ our Son, rise in our hearts this day. Enfold us in the brightness of your love and bear us at the last to heaven's horizon. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory Glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. 
John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The prologue of John's Gospel is read several times during Christmas tide. It's the bigger picture within which the nativity stories of Jesus are told and understood. In place of a reflection today, listen to these two hymns written by 4th century Syrian Orthodox poet Ephraim the Syrian and a third hymn written in the time of the 6th century Christian Emperor of Byzantium, Theodosius. Who has seen the babe? Who is more ancient than his bearer? The ancient one entered and became young in her. He emerged an infant and grew by her milk. He entered and became small in her. He emerged and grew through her. A great wonder. Glorious is the wise one who allied and joined divinity with humanity, one from the height and the other from the depth. He mingled the natures like pigments and an image came into being, the God-man. O zealous one who saw Adam, who became dust and the accursed serpent eating him, reality dwelt in what had lost its flavour. He made him salt by which the cursed serpent would be blinded. Blessed is the compassionate one, who saw next to paradise the lance that barred the way to the tree of life. He came to take up the body that would be struck, so that by the opening in his side he might break through the way to paradise. Blessed is the messenger who came bearing a great peace. By the mercy of his father, he lowered himself to us. Our own debts he did not take up to him, reconciled his lordship with his chattels. Only begotten Son and immortal Word of God, for our salvation you willed to be incarnate of the holy God-bearing and ever-Virgin Mary. Without change you became man and was crucified. O Christ our God, trampling down death by death, of the Holy Trinity you are one, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Save us. The word of life which was from the beginning we proclaim to you. Let us pray for the people Christ came to save. Wonderful Counselor, you order all things with your wisdom. Help the Church to reveal the mystery of your love and fill her with the Spirit of Truth. Lord, graciously hear us. Mighty God, the government is on your shoulders. Guide the leaders of the nations and bring into your kingdom of justice and righteousness all your people. Lord, graciously hear us. Everlasting Father, you call us to live together in unity. Protect by your mercy all your children. Bless our families and renew our communities. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Prince of Peace, you bring reconciliation through the cross. By your healing power, give to all who suffer your gift of holiness and peace. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, who gave grace to your servant Thomas to put aside all earthly fear and be faithful even to death, grant that we, disregarding worldly esteem, may fight all wrong, uphold your rule, and serve you to our lives' end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ, who by his incarnation united all things earthly and heavenly, bless us with unbounded joy and peace. Amen.